Go ahead. Hello, everybody. Hope Hi, everybody Coach. Had a, hope everybody had a great weekend, a happy Thanksgiving. Mark, I'll get started here if it's okay. Yes, sir. Thought, uh, really, really proud of the guys. Uh, they had a great effort. Um, the uh, number two team in the country. Uh, they were really, really good as advertised. It's two of the best lines of scrimmage, uh, too deep. I mean, they lose their starting center. They lose their starting right guard. And the guys that came in played really well. So um, uh, I'm excited for Brian Kelly and where he is after 10, 11 years in his program. They've, they've won 10 games, I think, six years in a row now, or six out of the 10 he's been there. And those guys are really, really good. And you start looking at uh, the, both their lines of scrimmage are, are great. Um, the receivers are like tight ends. Their tight ends are the best in the country, I think. And Ian Book is amazing. He, in my estimation, he should be in the Heisman race. He's won 23 and he, or 29. He's lost three. Uh, we had opportunities to get him on the ground time and time and time again and couldn't. And then he made two or three key plays where he just flips the ball with his left hand. And, and uh, the last one uh, that he completed to the, the tight end, uh, Chaz hits him as he's throwing it on the right side. It's an amazing play that uh, uh, I was just shocked that he did it. And at the same time, we, we um, as poorly as we played offensively the second half with five minutes left to go, we've got them backed up at the 10 in a seven point game with a chance to win when they uh, hit the run and, and got it out to the 15 that, that pretty much put it away. But with six minutes to go, we're at the 38 yard line going in uh, with the ball with a chance to win the game. So we had our chances. Um, it's very, very disappointing that, that we didn't close better. Uh, it shows us exactly um, what our concerns are and it exposes you when you're playing someone that's that good um, and you, you have to step up. The other thing I think that's good is uh, last year we, we come close to Clemson. Clemson probably wasn't very interested um, and we end up and, and people thought, oh, that's good. We, we hung in there. And this year people are mad that we, we played Notre Dame when Notre Dame was interested. They were focused and, and played a, a great ball game. So uh, I do think that uh, we have raised expectations for a program, and, and that's good. If your fans aren't mad after a win, I get mad after a win. That's why I'm not very good at press conference after, after a win because I'm, I'm emotional and I'm upset and I'm mad. And uh, I did learn uh, – through, through many years at, at Texas that uh, um, when you're mad at a press conference after the game, don't say things that you're not really sure about. And, and that's why I, I sat there and said, I want to watch the video and I want to see and I want Phil to talk to you and I want Jay to talk to you because that's what we have them here for. Uh, but in certain cases in my past, I've said so-and-so stunk and he didn't. He really played well. It just looked like a few plays that he stunk. So I want to make sure that what I'm telling you is facts. And, and that's why um, I, I wait and, and, and try to get it right. Um, proud of the guys, the way they've handled COVID and the staff. It's a mess everywhere. Uh, games being canceled and moved. We, we will get our test results back tonight again from yesterday. Uh, could be bad when we, we know that. Uh, but uh, our guys have really done well and our staff, and I'm really, really proud of, of the way that they've, uh, they've taken it very seriously, and they've worked hard to, uh, to try to make sure that, number one, we're safe, and, and number two, that we get to continue to play. I've asked our guys to make sure that no games are canceled because of us, and, and that's something that we're, we're really working hard to do. Uh, I'll talk about the positive things first. I know we'll get to the others because you're anxious. Uh, about the, the negative things, and that's, that's part of what press conferences are about. I learned that not only at Texas, but in my five years out, it's what we need to fix, not what we did well normally. Um, special teams that have, have been uh, struggling throughout the year uh, had by far their best game. Uh, ben Kiernan was unbelievable. Uh, his ability with his soccer background from Ireland to kick it away from the returner uh, really, really helped us with field position uh, at a day where they punted us inside the four twice. Uh, so he, he did just an amazing job. We covered really well uh, and, and so proud of him. I think he averaged about 50 yards per punt uh, and punted some down inside. So uh, he, he did a, had a 62-yard punt maybe, but he, he was really, really good. Jonathan Kim continues to maybe be the best in the nation at kicking kickoffs out. 
Um, and then the one that he didn't kick out with their 4-4 return guy, um, we, we came down British Brooks and uh, Kadri Jackson uh, make great plays and, and hit him and, and stop him short of the 20. And then uh, uh, Grayson Atkins, he's made six out of his last seven, I think, field goals, and he, he was 100% on, on Saturday. Uh, the two guys that stood out the most in special teams were British Brooks, who's about the, that guy every week, and uh, Obi uh, Buna, who, who is uh, becoming a special team star. Uh, he is uh, playing really well. He's found his role there, and he steps up and plays well. Uh, defensively, we played our best game. I wasn't sure that uh, the, the way that teams like Florida State and, and Virginia and, and um, even Virginia Tech knocked us off the ball, that we would be able to hang in there uh, with, with this team. Uh, because they're the, by far the best offensive line we've played. And our front seven did a good job. It was our front seven against their front seven, and, and they, they stood up and, and um, far from being great, but it, we held them to about our average till that last run, which was going to be about 150 yards rushing. Um, and, and with this football team uh, against theirs, I thought the guys did well. We, we tackled well. Um, we, we still got to play the ball better uh, because they're big receivers. We, we were there and didn't make the plays a couple of times, and we've got to improve in that area. Uh, Don Chapman had one go right over his head that he's in position to, to intercept. And uh, uh, same thing with Tony uh, uh, on one ball where he gets an interference call down in the, the end. Uh, but we had our, we had our chances. Uh, still not getting enough sacks. We only got two out of book, but I think a lot of that credit goes to book because we were there and he just is uh, very elusive. Um, and we're not forcing turnovers. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's amazing. You can win games without forcing turnovers, but we're not turning the ball over. So that probably is saving us in, in that area. Uh, the, the three players that played the best on defense and a lot of guys played well were Taman Fox. Um, Chaz Surratt had his best game as a linebacker by far. Uh, and uh, Ray Vohasek. Uh Those three guys were the, the three best players. And we, norm we don't have players of the game when we lose, but I, I do think that it's unfair to the guys that played so well, not to mention their names, if, uh, if they've had a great game, even, even in losses. Offensively, I thought, uh, as always, the coaches had a great plan to start the game. I think we've scored about every first drive, maybe except one ball game all year. Uh, the first half was really, really good offensively. We, we went into halftime feeling good, and we came back out. And, and what I thought happened and, uh, after the game, it, 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 it happened. Their front seven whipped our front seven. And we lost a bunch of one-on-one -on -one battles. So as players and coaches, we've got to go back and look at it. Could we have helped them more? We, we didn't give Sam time. Um, our advantages were our speed in their secondary. And... We couldn't get the ball uh, to them enough because of the sacks. Now, two of the sacks were runs that were tackles for loss, and, uh, but we still had – we didn't have breakdowns. We had people get run over, and we got to get stronger. Uh, th this is a great test for us to show us if you want to be a national team, this is who you got to be, and, and we're not there yet. So we'll have a, another opportunity to show that in two weeks when we play Miami because they're a national team, and, and right now we're not. We're a good team. We're a better team. We're a team that's improving. We're a team that's getting better. Uh, but we were, not, uh, we were not able to pull off the, the big upset uh, when we had an opportunity to do it uh, with even five minutes left to go in, in that game. Uh, the player that played the best on offense was Daz Newsom. He, he was uh, um, very elusive in space. They couldn't tackle him, and he got us out of trouble uh, two or three different times. So really, really proud of him. We talk about penalties uh, each week. It's, it's something that we've got to improve. Um, I wrote them down for you this week. It's something we, uh, I, I took all the penalties for the year uh, by position, by player. And we're looking at them uh, specifically to see who and why. And if a guy's not good enough to have five penalties for this year, then we won't play him. I mean, we've told them. We have officials that practice every day. Um, we, mark, we call out the penalties every day. Uh, and it's time that we stopped. Part of the reason you have penalties against a really good team, especially holding penalties up front when they're better than you are and you can't block them, you, you have to hold them to try to keep them from getting to your quarterback. And that happened some on Saturday. 
because they're so quick and so good up front. So we had uh, two holding calls. Uh, one of them, uh, usually when you have a holding call or a sack, you lose a possession. And, and that's uh, very, very difficult. And, and obviously that was the story of the second half. That's why we didn't move the ball and, and had to punt so much. But we had two holding penalties. We had a false start that took us from a third and five to a third and nine. And we were atrocious on third downs on Saturday because that's the best thing Notre Dame does when they get you in long yardage situations. Um, and then we had one unsportsmanlike conduct where actually their guy pushed ours and we pushed back. So it probably should have been offsetting penalties when you look at that and, and the, they'll look at that today. Uh, we had an offsides by a big freshman, uh, redshirt freshman nose tackle that's inexcusable. You listen to the uh, voice infliction instead of you're right there in front of the ball. I've always thought I didn't play nose tackle, but how can you move when the ball is right in front of you? Watch the ball, man. Come off on the ball. Don't listen to the, the voice. Um, we had a holding call with the ball thrown up in the, the seats, and that was because we grabbed the jersey with the defensive back. We had a pass interference where the ball was overthrown again and the guy's out of bounds, and we push him with the left arm instead of just turning our back and playing it. So those are things that we've got to learn. And then we didn't play the ball on another um, deep ball uh, with a defensive back that was pass interference as, as well. And then the offsides on the fourth and one, uh, that's one that you, you just got to look at and, and see what you think. We obviously can't, we, we can't be in a position to even be called because that was one that uh, we should have known uh, what was happening. Uh, some people have asked, why are we playing Western Carolina? Uh, it was a 10 plus one to start the year when we redid the schedules with the ACC. So you were, uh, they asked you to play one out of conference game. Uh, we wanted to play an in-state team if we could. Uh, Charlotte was not able to come because of COVID. So then we said, okay, we just won't play another one. And the uh, ACC office told us that we needed to play another one because we had promised so many TV um, exposures. So then we thought we'd play it the week before Notre Dame and we couldn't because that was finals week and we couldn't even practice that week. We even had some finals on, on Friday and Saturday. Um, so this is why this game got put uh, back here where it is. Coach Spire's done a good job. Uh, I think he played with uh, Lonnie Galloway. He's really good friends with Lonnie and Stacy Searles. I think he coached with Stacy at, uh, uh, at uh, Appalachian State. Um, They've got a really good running back with Donovan Spencer. They blitz a lot on defense. The, the, uh, they're not going to be as good as us. They're going to play hard because they, they uh, like us playing against Notre Dame, they'll be excited about coming to Chapel Hill, and they've done this. They've gone to Tuscaloosa. To the, this isn't new for them. It's a strange year for them in that they're only playing three games, then they'll play their conference games in the spring. Um, but the biggest thing for us is uh, I get ready to play. And, and we, we can't be the up and down team that we've been some this year. And for our program to get where it needs to be, we've got to be excited about practicing every day and playing every day, regardless of who the opponent is. And this is also senior day. So we sat down at open date with all of our seniors and juniors that uh, could possibly go to the NFL. And we tried to give them as much information as we could. If you're coming back, here's how much we think you would play right now. Uh, if you want to graduate and go into the business world, we'll help you get a job. If you want to graduate and, and uh, be a graduate transfer, we'll help you transfer somewhere else. And the, the kids have been great. Everybody's been really honest and upfront. Um, it's been fair. It's been very transparent. Um, and and um, also with the seniors that could come back with the NCAA rule this year, uh, we've just asked them, any of you that want to come back, we'd love to have you. If you don't, uh, we'll, we'll help you get somewhere else. So uh, the most important thing is that the, the guys get their degrees and um, that, that's what uh, uh, this, this whole transition period is about. Uh, questions? All right, thanks coach. If you have a question, please use the raised hand function. And our first question today will come from Dina King. Go ahead, Dina. Coach, piggybacking on what, what you said about Western, uh, in your experience as a head coach, how challenging is it to in a week like this to get your group to be uh, focused at a high level? Well, Dana, it's, it's about your, your culture. It's about your, your process. It, it's not going to be hard because our guys have to go back to work. 
and, and their goal is to, to be as good as a Notre Dame, to be as good as a Clemson. That's who we want to be, and we're not there. So every day that you practice, you got to practice against Notre Dame. You got to practice against Clemson. You got to practice against a, a team like Miami that is a top 10 team. And, and by doing that, <clears throat> then you're ready to play each week. And, and I think that's the big thing. And people will say, well, this game's not important. Well, try to lose it. <clears throat> and then it becomes important. Uh, so uh, they're all important. And, and uh, we need to play our best. The other thing that, that I've told guys for my 40 something years in, in coaching is uh, if you go out to practice not ready to practice, you'll get hurt. You don't get to play anymore. You go into a game on Saturday and you're not ready to play, you get hurt because you're staying around because Western's going to be excited. So uh, get excited. We've got some things we've got to fix. We need to build on the progress that we made on defense, and, and we've got to go back and do a better job on offense So uh, and, and continue to improve on special teams because we've got uh, three games left, hopefully, uh, here as, as we look at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go over to Brian Keyes, please. Hey, Mac, just with uh, Saturday being the last home game for the seniors and the guys who are leaving, what's the mood in the locker room like? I know this year was weird with not really having fans in attendance. Brian, the, uh, the, the saddest thing for this year is just that. I mean, for football, I mean, we've got a pandemic. We've got uh, people that are sick, people that have lost their lives, family members. We've got people that uh, don't have jobs and people that are evicted. I mean, we, we've got a mess. And it seems like it's getting worse right now. Uh, but for our team, they've been very safe. And, and I think they appreciate that. They, they've had vitamins and nutrition and they've, they've had doctors around them. We get tested three days a week. So uh, probably the safe environment that our, our coaches and team could be in is right here. Uh, I mean, that's uh, uh, Sally doesn't even go to the away games. I, I drive home and back. Uh, because we're all trying to make sure that we stay safe. Uh, so I would say that they're, they're probably worn out mentally because we started August 6th and, and they will go these next two weeks and then we won't know until um, December 20th, the way I understand it, where we're playing in a bowl game. So we'll probably let them uh, go home for four or five days uh, to get a mental break. Uh, but we're trying to make uh, uh, Senior Day really special for them understanding that it's not going to be like a normal senior day, Brian, but they, uh, the, the seniors will, we're still going to have a senior banquet Sunday night after Miami. It'll be in the blues home and it'll be uh, just with our team where they can have captains and, and awards, but, but we'll still have it. And uh, Saturday, since the parents can't come down on the field because it's an NCAA rule, nobody can be on the field outside of your, your football family. Uh, the parents are going to send a video message to their sons while they walk out on the field. So we're trying our best to, to, to make a, a very difficult situation better. Uh, but so sad uh, Friday that we didn't have 50 something thousand people screaming in that stadium. It would have been uh, 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 the best crowd I've ever seen in that stadium was when we played Florida State in, in uh, 97. Uh, this one would have been just like it and it could have helped us. Uh, so sorry that our fans have not been able to come. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question comes from Ross Martin. Hey, Mac, I know it's just Monday, but I mean, entering the Western Carolina game, is there an approach or a plan to play backups more, to play younger players? Do you have a plan in place for if you do get up early in the, in the first half, third quarter, that kind of deal? Ross, it, it'll, it'll sound like coach speak, but you, you do whatever you need to do to win the game. And then if you get in a position like we have in some other games this year, then you can substitute. Weirdly enough, we're, we're substituting so many young ones on defense now that, that that probably won't change that much. The substitutions would be more on offense um, because you'd like to get your backup quarterback some work and uh, but, but right now, the, the most important thing is you you got to win the game. Like I said, go into this one, lose it, and it's a different conversation next Monday. Yeah, it was very coach speak there. Okay, then building on that. Um, it, was a very, it was a very dumb question too, Ross, because you knew the answer. This is going to be on – this is public, Matt. You can't say those type of things to me. Um, Excuse me. 
All right. Well, then, uh, with the young defensive players, uh, what have you seen from the freshmen that really stood out, and, and the young players, especially against Notre Dame? You started two freshmen on defense, I think, and played a lot more. Anything that stood out to you from the Notre Dame game? Yes, the uh, the the four guys uh, really in the red uh, red shirt freshmen, if you count Kevin Hester, um, but Clyde Pender, uh, Miles Murphy, um, Desmond Evans and Cayman Rucker all stood in there and, and held their own. They did a good job. And, and then uh, you look up and you've got a high school senior in Tony Grimes playing corner and you've got a, a nickel uh, Jaquarius Conley uh, that's playing uh, at the same time. And uh, probably the, the hardest lick of the game was Jaquarius Conley on Ian Book at one time. So uh, future's really, really bright with these guys and uh, we've just got to keep playing them. It, it was, uh, uh, you know, we talked about it so much early. We should be playing them more, and why aren't we? And and now we just turned it loose, and we have them on a, a rotation. I thought uh, both J Javon DeWitt and uh, uh, Tim Cross did a good job of of rotating those guys early and often, and and that's one of the reasons we didn't get beaten down in the the defensive line. We stayed fresh. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go over to C.L. Brown. Hi, Mac. Uh, with Tony Grimes, obviously he should, or by all accounts, would be a senior in high school. What was kind of your your vision for uh, when he enrolled early and came? What was kind of your vision of how this season would go for him? I mean, would you figure he would be in a role as big as he was against Notre Dame, as big as a game as that was? C.L., it, it happened so quickly that it, it was kind of thrown on us because I've never seen this happen. Uh, so they, they canceled um, high school football for the fall in, in Virginia. And, and then his parents call and say, well, we'd like to come now. He's gotten his academics where he can graduate this summer. Then we had to get approval from the NCAA. We had to get approval from our compliance. We had to get admissions involved. And thank goodness he was, he's a very good student. So that wasn't an issue. So we didn't know till probably the week before August that he was actually going to be able to come. And then he gets here and you got to find roommates for him because he doesn't have a class and he doesn't know anybody. And, and then he, you know, you've never been on the field with him. So you've got to, you worry about his strength. Um, he's a high school senior. So you worry about him being homesick. Um, you, you worry about his, uh, he's not quite as strong as some of the other guys because he's, he's just not older. He's, he's so young. Uh, so uh, Dre and Jay got together with his family and with him and started talking about, let's bring you along slow. Let's let you play some special teams. Let's, uh, uh, let's get you more involved each week. And then at some point, maybe we're going to be able to get you some more time. And, and basically both groups said, let's just not count this as a year. Well, let's just let this thing go. And, and let's, get anything we can get out of it, but you haven't been through spring practice, you're, you're not older, uh, but let's don't put pressure on Tony to play. And then he's just done well enough that he, he just continues to get better. And I thought he played really, really well on Saturday for, for the circumstances. And the, the other concern with, uh, with, with Dre and Jay, which I, I think was appropriate, is that you put him out there too early and he gets burned and, and then he gets discouraged, and, and I didn't see that happening on Saturday. They, they attacked him a few times, and uh, I thought he held his own pretty good. Yeah. And in terms of uh, overall talent level, how far do you feel off? I, I remember before the game you were saying you, got, you felt like you guys were a few plays off of, of being undefeated coming into that game, you know, being a top 10 versus top 10 kind of game. How far do you feel like you guys are off as a program talent-wise uh, in the two deep to where you go into a game and you feel like you're measuring up against a, a top five opponent like that, like you, you're, you have the same amount of talent. Oh, gosh. Uh, that's, that's a hard one. They, uh, they just lined up and whipped us the second half. So, I, I mean, that's uh, um, defensively, it's the, the frustrating thing for me, CL, is we haven't played a full game. You go back to our defense played well enough to win on Saturday. Uh, we'd like more sacks. We'd like more turnovers, but they played well enough to win. 
our kicking game played well enough to win. Our offense played a half and then got dominated the second half. So uh, we couldn't block those guys the second half. And that's the front seven. That's backs. That's tight ends. They lined up and whipped us. So um, we've got to get better. Um, we've got to play better each week. We need to get stronger as a football team. And we've got to have uh, more confidence to be able to pull off wins like that. Um, and and I, the recruiting is taking care of itself. We're going to get there. Uh, but we're two years into a process that uh, uh, is a complete turnaround. Thanks, so we're man. not near there yet. Okay. Uh, our next question comes from Jared Fialco. Mac, you mentioned some of the oddities that will encompass this week's senior day. Just curious, because of the NCAA mandate that this year does not count in terms of eligibility, is there a discussion that you're going to have to have with some of these seniors about whether or not they do want to come back? Because they know they don't count against the scholarships, but the NCAA didn't mandate that all schools have to you know, honor those scholarship agreements. Is there some kind of conversation you're going to have, or can you conceivably see some of these seniors that are being honored out there coming back for another year next year? Yeah, Jared, the, it, it's been uh, uh, direct, hard conversations in the two years that we've been here. And basically what the, the young people and us have decided is if you're not playing, you want to play and you're working really hard, let's get your degree and we'll help you get somewhere else if you want to keep playing. And, and that's what it's been. If they're playing, it's not any discussion. They can come back. If they're not playing, they don't want to come back. But they want to get a degree from North Carolina. So uh, that's, that's more than anything else. Kids want to play. And even some of the younger ones, if they're not getting to play at all or they're, they're not having an active role, uh, or even if they're playing some and they think they should be starting, we've told them that's your right. We're going to be honest with you. We're going to be fair. If your coach and I don't think you're ready to do that and you want to do that, I got it. We'll help you. So we've, we've tried to be as, as honest as we possibly can as a group. And, and these, again, these kids have been incredible. They, they get it. They, they said, hey, if we're not playing, I, I don't want to be here. Why, why would you work as hard as these kids work and not play? You need to play. And, and it's not, uh, some people would say it's the Larry players and the new staff players. Not, it's not. It's who's playing. And, and that's what we've got to get down to. So um, I, I think the, the biggest thing is that we're in a really good place mentally with these guys and, and with the honesty uh, we're going to help anyone who's not playing here that wants to leave, whether he's graduating or not. I would hope they graduate. That would be better. But if a young one wants to leave, uh, then we're going to get on the phone and we're going to call the schools he'd be interested in and, and, and tell the coaches why they're not playing here. Uh, it, it may be that there's a lot better player in front of them and they're good enough to play. But uh, we're, we're committed to trying to help every player. I, I thought Roscoe Johnson's one that comes to mind. He's played some at Louisville this year. Uh, he wouldn't have had a chance to play as much with our receiving court because they're really good. But Roscoe was able to go to the bowl with us. He transferred. He, he went back to his old coach in, in Gunner Brewer, and he's happy and, and playing at uh, Louisville. We stay in touch with him. So um, I know Cade Fortin, uh, he hurt his shoulder, and I, I had a text conversation with him down at South Florida. So – uh, KJ Sales and I have gone back and forth some with conversation. So you try to, to help the young guys because it's about them. And then you try to keep in touch with them after they leave.